So Cranston with a drill. I'm going to talk about the city of Chicago a little bit today. Demetrius, what's the deal? I was on the phone with one of my friends last night. What's up, LeVar? You live out in the far south. Bleeder too. Out there where the two youth was dumped out there. Where their bodies was dumped out there. I got a lot of friends out there. All Girl Gardens, Riverdale. They shooting people like crazy out in uh, All Girl Gardens. The gardens is going crazy. I remember when uh, Obama used to work out there in the gardens. But the violence is crazy out there right now. Through the roof. Yes, Najee. I still gonna call you, brother. Maybe this evening or maybe tomorrow. I just been running around doing a lot of stuff. Trying to straighten out my my crib. Oh yeah, the violence is through the roof, man. Everybody in these communities know where the violence is coming from. There's people that don't live in Chicago that's making up all these crazy conspiracies. But nobody on the streets and nobody where it's going down at, that's not what they're talking about. A lot of the OGs, you know, have been asked about the situation. <clears throat> they saying they can't do nothing about it. You know? There's a big debate over that the other day. And one OG was saying, man, we used to run into their house, man, and take their guns and take their dope if they shot a kid. But the other OGs were saying, yeah, but that's when that's when everybody was under one flag. Each gang was under one banner. It ain't like that no more. It's a bunch of small cliques. People from the outside don't understand that. It's not just one gang no more. They still rep the one major gang, but they like offshoots of the major gangs. Like renegades. They also can't be located as easily as people think. It's not like they got a a tree house or, you know, it's not like the Mickey Mouse Club where you could just go find them. It's deeper than that. But uh, I've been I've been overworking on Chirac homicide for about five years now. I've been trying to get people to deal with the situation in Chicago for years. And most people just ignore it. Most of the conversations about Chicago are phony. Their conversations after, you know, after the news media covers it then you know it's something for everybody to talk about for a week or two but these problems have been going on in the black community for a long time black people have ignored uh the problems with the justice systems in their community for a long time black people have ignored ignored their schools and ignored the justice system 
including those in the conscious community. The black people in the conscious community totally ignore the schools in, uh, in the cities. They keep talking about build our own schools. It's like people make up these little fake sayings to say, and then they just say them with no thought behind them. So your kid get kicked out of school. They say, build our own schools. Like, man, this is, what the hell happened to us? We just throw around catchphrases. We worse than the politicians. We don't even know if that's practical or nothing. Just say it. It's unbelievable. I had a sister tell me homeschool. Like everybody's not at home. Like you, sister. I mean, seriously. Unbelievable. And so you get all this fake concern about uh, the shooting, but it's not real. The black youth in the inner city been neglected by black people for a long time. For a long time, the black community has uh, turned their back on the youth, turned their backs on the streets for a long time. It's not even a subject or a conversation. I remember I was in the county jail for like four months and when the holiday came around, sure it was like some white ladies came down there and cooked uh, dinners, uh, Thanksgiving dinners for all them black men down there. The black community don't even check. You ask me, you'd answer this. How can a young man be locked up in Rockers Island for years and years and years and the black community don't know? I tell you why, because they're too busy arguing. Well, the ones are supposed to know are the conscious ones. And, the, and they too busy arguing over Kemet and Israel and who's a Shemite and who's a fucking Hamite. And these are the ones who are supposed to be the enlightened ones who are supposed to be digging into the social situations of black people. Not a whole bunch of historical nonsense. You know, Elijah Muhammad was up in the prisons, dealing with the prisons. Malcolm was going to the prisons under the orders of Elijah Muhammad. He was sending uh, Muslims into the prisons to really know what's going on with you. We don't have nobody doing that no more. We don't have that. You know, it's just real messed up. And so you got all these people crying. Oh, they really don't care. You know, we know for a long time that uh, black people were being arrested. Uh, some of them for charges that was no good. We know that. We've been knowing for a long time that uh, people, when they get out of prison and jail, they can't get no jobs or nothing like that. You understand? And it's interesting because Demetrius said everything is balling, fake, and cartoony. Right? But here goes the thing. You see how you got the rappers? And you see how people saying the rappers are saying all this negative stuff and all that? And then you see you have the people over here that they're supposed to be enlightened and they, they say the rapper's not on nothing. Well, these enlightened ones, what the fuck are they doing? The ones that say that the rap's no good, that the community's that, are they visiting the prisons? Are they putting groups together to help expunge cases so brothers can get jobs and shit? They ain't, they ain't doing a goddamn thing. And the fact of the matter is, it's not the rapper that's responsible. It's the person that's got the knowledge that the rapper's lost is the one supposed to be doing the active work on the streets. But the one that got the knowledge, the one that criticizes Beyonce, criticizes Oprah, criticizes Michael Jordan, criticizes Jay-Z, that one, 
That one ain't doing nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Fake concern. They got fake concern about everything. Boots on the ground, some type of unity. No. So we have a situation where you got brothers that unite as gangs and do negative stuff. And then you have conscious people solo complaining about it. They can't even unite like the negative element. The negative element can unite better than the positive element. Like seriously. The negative element can get together and do stuff quicker than the positive. The positive is all on some individually complaining back and forth to each other. They won't even go, they won't even go complain to the people they're complaining about. So I have to go on Facebook. I'm following a bunch of conscious people and listen, listen to them tell me all day Jesus ain't coming back. What the fuck you keep telling other conscious people Jesus ain't coming back for? I mean, go down to the church. No, you ain't gonna go down to the church. You understand? And the so-called awake, woke, conscious community is too busy preaching to the choir. Too busy. I had a brother say, man, that brother in the city of Chicago, ain't nothing going on in the city of Chicago. They're not doing nothing in the city. All of this. And I'm thinking, bro, what, what are, are you trying to help? I've been out here by myself. I had to go off on Roland Martin. I had to go off on... Uh, 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 Anderson Cooper, I had to go off on Don Lemon. I had to go off on all the black journalists by myself. I'm on Twitter. And when I was trashing Roland Martin, all the black people that follow him, all the side with him getting on my case because I'm trashing him because I figured he's not covering the real inside situation of what's going on with black people in these jails, in these prisons with this shooting and these murders. It was three years ago. And all the black people went against me. Then they go silent. And then when the Europeans go and make Chicago a headline, then here they all go, oh, Chicago, Chicago. I'm just looking at them. I'm like, oh, you wouldn't assist me. You wouldn't come and, and hit the streets and, 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 and put a spotlight on this. TV1, BET, ah, oh, yeah. They ain't did shit, ain't said nothing. The conscious community ain't said shit. They ain't saying nothing about the inner city at all. In many ways, the conscious community is just like the Negroes. You know how the Negroes get their job in their car and they look at the pole youth getting pulled over by police and be like, he probably did something. So the Negroes, they just leave the leave the 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 the, the worst of our community. They just leave them. And then people become woke and they just leave them too. So they off in some Negro spiritual world and these ones off in some conscious community world and the rest, the rest of the poor black people is just <laughs> ain't got no representation or nothing. There's no even no conversations about regular black people that I see Every time I go on one of these conscious community channels, they always got some uppity conscious motherfucker talking to some other uppity conscious motherfucker. They don't ever go and get like the streets and ask them what's going on. I know one time on Sunday when they did have a brother from the, from the streets on there, the brother going to start trying to check him, say, oh, you don't talk like this and don't talk like that. What the fuck, bro? Oh, so you don't want to interview the streets. You want the streets to get there and talk how you talk, but you ain't doing a goddamn thing for the streets. Nothing. It's just a big old gap. And when we get some money and we have black people get money, they try to help but they try to help those who's already trying to do something positive. And that's good too, because they need help. 
students like my daughter and people like that. They need help. That's a good thing. But nobody helps to, to deject it. All the little black young men in the county jail that's in the school wing right now. Nobody tries to reach out. Nobody. It's just silence. They don't go down in these communities. If they do, they try to... Uh, Baba TV does hit the streets. I will give it to Baba TV. You're right, Shabazz. Baba TV is one of the ones that do these on the streets. I will give Baba TV that. It's one of the best. You're 100% right. Baba TV gives a, a variety of information. I give them a lot of respect for that. You know, much respect to Baba TV. But there's no assistance. So they say, well, Pharaoh, why can't the OGs do nothing with the youth? If if the OGs did try to do something with the youth, they wouldn't get the OGs wouldn't get no support. You know, they they would need support. You know, if they're gonna go against the gangs, who's gonna be their backup? But you can't you can't get no backup. You understand? Or you get these Roland Martins and these Tom Joyners and all these people. All they want to do is talk a bunch of Democratic shit and what the Republicans is doing. You know, they don't give a damn about uh, the lower class of black people in Texas, in New Orleans. All these frat boys. The fucking frat, black frat boys. They don't give a damn. They don't come do nothing. The only really popular black person that I know that that goes to the worst areas is Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's the only one that really like hits the streets for real. He come down in the worst neighborhoods with the whole nation of Islam and they hit the block and be looking like the mosque when they come over there. But they the only ones actually come out and like shake people's hands and deal with people. Oh, brother Ben X. They the only ones. Am I lying, Ben? Minister Louis Farrakhan is the only one that go in the rough places. The only one. None of the others do it. None of the others do it. They're too busy making videos about what about each other within this positive state of mind. They'll make their videos about that. You know, I love all the brothers out here, but it's time out for making videos about how the nation of Islam ain't this and how the Moors ain't this and how it's time to start making videos and conversations about the lowest denominator in our community. That's what time it is. It's our responsibility. Who other responsibility is it? What's the purpose of being woke? What's the pur purpose of being enlightened? When you sit up there and you see brothers and sisters struggling on, on the lowest level. And so for me, when we go around a lot of the older gang members that got clout, what can I tell them? They don't have no backup. So they're not willing to go against the gangs by themselves. If they had other people from the, 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 the black community support them, then they would be able to go in and at least attempt to do something. But there's absolutely no support. It's just silence. And when you get on the buses, and, and and trains in the city of Chicago, you can you can see it. You can see it. The youth are just totally out of line. They don't care if old people on the bus. They talk. They talk horrible. With old people right on the bus. The parents don't have no aid and assistance. And they, they're around here killing people like crazy. And 
instead of uh, black people mobilizing on the city, they sitting around talking about, is the police doing it? Talking about something you don't know about. They say, is the police doing it? You understand? It's, it's, it's sad. And uh, I'm just talking about it because I was on the phone a lot last night with, with some people and they shoot people all behind their houses and everywhere. You know. You know, they was really mad about them two brothers being dumped out there in all girl gardens like that. They was mad about that, you know. And I'm not going to say which gangs was behind that. But I can tell you it wasn't the police. You know, this, these gang wars have really turned up really high. And there's there's no one that can help the situation other than uh, black people themselves uh, getting off of this high horse and getting down in the trenches. You know, because we'll get on buses and stuff every now and then, but you know how many buses in the city of Chicago? You know how big Chicago is, the west side and all that? And then that's just Chicago. We got Newark. We got Philadelphia. We got Los Angeles. Brothers just packed on top of each other in L.A. County Jail with gang units running around snatching brothers up off the streets left and right. The violence is up in New York. They shooting people left and right. And we're not monitoring our own communities. You know, we, we're not monitoring our own communities. Uh, we don't have any way to interface with them. Uh, so it's like if you get on social media and and you're a positive brother and, you, and you're talking positivity, the only people that follow you is other positive people. What's up, Black Lit? Other positive people follow you. Though the people that's causing the most problem, they're not following me on Instagram or they're not watching this. They're not watching this. So whatever message I got from them, I got to actually go on the streets. You know, two weeks ago, we a, a brother, he run it in the area and we was talking to him about this. And he said, listen, man. He said, what you all saying is right. But if I uh, if I do what y'all are saying, they'll turn on me. He feels that the gangs will turn on him. So he's not willing. It'll just be him against the world. And I understand. Because uh, if you got if you got ten of them. You have one brother, he's got a little bit of rank and he wants to go and try to change everybody. The one right under him is going to try to knock him off to keep everybody stupid and everybody on the low level. And the brother, he ain't got, he don't have no support from the outside. I remember I was arguing with uh, CNN when CNN came to Chicago about, what, two years ago. And like I told him, you're just going to come and go. You're not, you just come in here because uh, it's a slow news day and you're just going to come and go. You know, Donald Trump talked all that shit about how Obama didn't do nothing for Chicago. What the hell is Trump doing for the violence here? Nothing. Nothing. Because guess what? He found out the same thing Obama found out. Can't be done. You can't do nothing with the feds or nothing like that. That will just make the violence increase. People tell me, well, why don't they stand in the feds? Man, don't you know what happened? Now you have double the violence because the radicals just get upset. So you'll still have the you'll still have the streets doing what they do, but then you have the other radical black people going back and forth with the police. Saying they don't want to be in no occupied uh situation.
Or we don't have no way to demand uh, white police out of the neighborhood or nothing. You know, the only person that's going to say anything like that is Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's the only one going to say, get white police out the neighborhood. And the, more, the real radical stuff, he the only one. This is a fact. Nobody else talks about anything like that. Now, Minister Louis Farrakhan is the only person that talks about what's really going on with the common black person. All of the others are on some type of fairy tale type stuff. You know, I congratulate those that are trying to save the kids that are trying to make something out they sell. But we got to save the ones that don't want to make anything out of themselves that feel like they just lost. Or, you know, like a lot of times I see people that complain about the rap news. But from my perspective, if you're not going to invest, what can you say? The only the only way you can influence the music is to invest. You can be on the outside and make a change. So if I'm a big drug dealer and I'm going to invest in the youth and they're going to talk about trapping and selling drugs, cool. But what can you say when you're a, a conscious person or whatever and you don't invest? Uh, Fred Hampton Jr., he's in the neighborhood doing a lot too, but he's also limited because uh, he's always got the feds on his neck. Yeah, he always got the feds on his neck and, and, uh, He's trying to do national. He's trying to be national, uh, you know, uh, with the Panther Cubs and everything. But he's limited, though. That organization's not big enough. The only thing that's big enough is a, is a combined force of people that say they woke. So this is where the debates and the negativity between Hebrew and Muslim and Kemetic and this, this is where this is negative because we need all hands on deck to fix this situation. We, we cannot keep arguing about what we see different rather than working together on what we see needs to be changed. Our priorities as black men, our priorities is messed up. You know, these youth out here, they all on uh, probation, parole, or supervision, or locked up. That's a vicious cycle. And they got some people down at the courthouse, down to Daly Center, where you can go, you know, you can go over to the police station and get your record, then go get your record expunged. But I'm saying it's not promoted. It's not, it's not promoted where the youth don't even know this. Because we don't, we don't promote these type of things. We don't, we don't go down in the gutter and dig down in the gutter. We always talk down to them. We always talk about uh, what the black man should do. He should clean himself up and all that. That's all fine and dandy. But what good is it talking about the black man should clean himself up if the dirty black man don't even hear what you're saying? I mean, I'm not a Muslim, but Elijah Muhammad showed us the whole damn blueprint. He had boots on the ground, men on the corner. You pull up to the corner, there's a brother selling the final car. He'll drop a word on you in a minute. Just roll your window down and ask him something. So it was right there in the streets. He, he showed us how to do it. You didn't have to be a Muslim to take his blueprint and apply it to every facet of consciousness. Like that was the best example of how to go from a, a, a righteous place down to the gutter to help the people in the gutter. It was, it's right there, right in front of your face. He was too busy trying to pick out his faults, which is fine. 
But it's not fine if you're not going to pick out the good stuff. You're not going to enhance the good stuff. Because the community is suffering in the meantime. And it's going to get worse. And, I mean, we're setting ourselves up uh, for some other nation or some another nationality to say, well, if you all can't uh, control yourself, we'll come in and control you. Then what? You see those light poles out in front of your house? You can easily get up one morning and instead of them being light poles, it'll be fence poles. We talk about this all the time, me and my brother. He says that they ain't light poles. He said those poles are fence poles. And they're designed where we wake up one morning and the military can come and they can just beat and lace the fence up to the top of the street light and tell you, you know, don't touch the fence. Stay in your yard or stay on your block. They can come out with big rows of fencing in the middle of the night and fence you in on, on, on your side of the street. You can't even go to the other side of the street. The, the, the tanks in the freeway, I don't know if it was Eisenhower, uh, but when they was having all them problems with them wars, they decided to make the interstate all through the United States. And they decided to make it so that they can land planes on it. And they decided to make it where it could divide up the country so they can know where is where in case of a war. Those are airstrips. They ain't for your car. Those are for tanks and planes. Right here in Chicago, if you go down to Dan Ryan, you put tanks and pl tanks on the Dan Ryan, you can't go from east to west. The Dan Ryan is right on State Street. And State Street uh, divides east from west. Madison divides north from south. They can go on, they can go on the damn run and divide this city up. You can't even go to the other side. And what you're going to do? Because screaming black power and screaming crack it is and screaming white supremacy on the internet, that ain't revolution. Where the hell is that revolution? All them brothers on the internet screaming, they'll be the first one shot. Drug outside and shot. Because nobody, because you'll have a brother, he'll be a revolutionary brother on the internet. And he'll build up some followings here and there and people on the internet. But right on his own block in his own neighborhood, don't have no backup. They can come in there and drag him out there and shoot him right in front of the neighbors. Because you're going outwardly, you're going on, you're going outwardly. You ain't dealing with the people right there, right around you. A new system has to be developed. We got to hit the streets. Yeah, they'll electrify the fence. Yeah, we have to hit the streets. We really have to. You have to talk to the person right next to you. Over the last... Uh, maybe six or seven months, I've been going out of my way to talk to brothers from Africa, even if they won't speak, just to go speak to them. I've been going out of my way to speak to brothers and sisters more. How you doing? How you doing? Go out of my way to speak to them because we don't even speak. I remember back in the 60s, we used to speak. We don't even speak. We don't even know each other. But then we want to get upset uh, when we see the violence in the city of Chicago. Never put no energy into it or nothing. Uh, you know, people ask me about the gangs all the time. You see the mayor of Chicago he gets on TV and he tries to run a game on y'all, try to act like he don't know what's going on. The Cook County Jail is the University of Gang Banging, okay? That's where the gangs come from, the county. Everybody involved in the streets know that. The county jail is where gangs come from. If you're whatever you call yourself, BD, GD, or whatever, you're not officially that until you go to the county jail. 
You know how many different brothers from different gangs come to the county jail and don't know they lit, don't know nothing? Where you think they know their literature at? Where you think they learn the official knowledge of the gang? In the county jail. Uh, so when these white police officers are around arresting your son for a bag of weed, a uh, driving offense, chumped up charges, and they take them down to the county jail, they're making your children be more official gang members. Even if you're not a gang member, if you go to the county jail and stay long enough, you know more criminals than you ever knew before. It's a university of gangbanging. Same for the same for the glass house in LA and all these county jails and all these different cities where y'all that all down in Atlanta. Them county jails down there. You go in, you come out officially more corrupt, officially. Seriously. You know, how many of your, you know how many of your people go in there for nothing? Case gets thrown out. He's already, he's already corrupted. And you know what they do to your kids? Let's say it's me and Brother Shabazz, different brothers, we go to the county jail. You know they don't put us with the with the young ones. They don't they won't put us where we can make a difference to help the young ones. They put you with the older ones. And they put the young ones in the school wing. They put the young ones, they put them on the school wing separated. He said the same, the brother say same in New York. They got the minor block, see? So now, if you're an older brother, you can't even get no sense into them. So they put them in there, creative uh, third eye. They put them in there where now they can just, uh, just be total degenerates. You know, they down there stopping up all the toilets, flushing all the stuff, beating up the teachers in the, when they go to the school, everything just wild. And you can't talk to them. But they know in these county jails, they know that uh, the OGs, if we get them and we locked up with them, we can make them come correct. So they keep them separated. So now we can't correct them. I tell you something, man. If you looked at the gangs in the city of Chicago and then you read gang literature, It'll blow your mind. They ain't doing nothing that's in the gang literature. The gang literature is all about taking care of the community, blah, blah, blah. Man, they not doing none of that. The only time a vice lord don't eat pork is when he's stuck in a county jail and prison where they can make him not eat pork. Soon as he's out, he's eating pork again. So what you see going on now is when the gang members get from under the grip of the gang and get back on the streets, they turn back to Little Cruz and do all this foolishness. So the gang has no the only, it used to be that the gangs had control of the gangs on the street, but to control the gang, you can't control the gang without like overpowering them. So if you look at somebody like Minister Louis Farrakhan, his, his hands is tired because to really deal with them, he would have to go in there and fuck them up, which he can't do. So all he could do is try to show a show of force, try to teach those he could teach, but he can't go in with the aggressive power to make them do right. And okay, let's, let's take me and say, bro, what could you do? Well, for one, I couldn't do nothing for all the different gangs. I would have to pick one. So let's pick one. Let's say the GDs. Now, the only way I could get the GDs in order, I have to be a GD, period. It has to be done from the inside. 
So let's say I want to be on some righteous GD shit. I want to get in there and I want to tell them, listen, we ain't shooting no more babies. We ain't doing none of this. For me to do that, I got to be the P. I got to be the boss. I got to be the boss of these GDs to get these GDs to listen to what I got to say. I even I got to hurt people so everybody know I'm not playing. Okay, the feds come in and give me a Rico. So, oh, geez, they got clout. They not finna touch that. Because as soon as you touch that, you get a Rico. Your brother's saying that you under mind control. Bro, that's make-believe, bro. It's make-believe. You ain't under no damn mind control, man. I could take you right now, uh, David. I could take you right now to Parkway Gardens or anywhere. And I'll let you pick out the youth that look bad in the neighborhood. And then if I take you to their parents, to their mother, you'll see what the hell's going on. And when you see the mother, you just shake your damn head. Now, they ain't nothing on mind control. They don't mind out of control. They have no day. They have no discipline. When I lived on O Block, I would look out my window. This is how I really learned a lot. I'm a social, I do social studies. I would just look out my, out my window. I would see the mother and the grandmother out fighting. The, the little kid is coming up. He a little month, the little kid. He like uh, 10 or 11. He like, on David, on David. What up, folks? Everybody's saying, folks, the, the five years old. The kindergartens all saying, folks, the mother and the mother has nothing to give the kid. You understand? Because I see people say, oh, they're putting microchips in the youth and blah, 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 blah. This is this is why I made this video. This is why I made this video. Because this is the kind of stuff. No, there's nothing there. I think of mind control. I think of a situation where you're growing up. Your mind is straight, and then somebody takes control of your mind. No, their mind's never straight from a baby. They're born into that. This why I had the compassion when I was able to sit out there and I was able to look at the kids born into it. How can I, how can I look down on a kid born into into that type of situation. We have children that they're born into it. The whole family is like that. We have situations where the mother has five kids. She got three sons and two daughters. Her youngest two sons, one is five, one is seven. The oldest son might be 15. He GD to the death. He folks, he folks, he GD. Who's coming to the house to see him? GD, what up, folks? What up, folks? What up, folks? What up, folks? The little brothers is sitting there. What you think they saying to the little brother? What up, little folks? They folks are already. When, when I lived in Parkway Gardens, my son, I brought my son to stay with my wife, and she had a stepson there, and they from little babies. I'm talking from little kids. They was going to Dulles School. They was going to Dulles. Chief Keith's sister went there. He would come up there and pick up his daughter, went to school with my daughter. And them little kids be saying, what up, folks? What up, folks? What up, folks? Now, that's good that somebody's saying that. Uh, Gray Mill say, fuck this gang of life BS. See, I'm glad they said that because it's not quite that. You're being told the wrong thing. It's not, it's not gang life like you see on television. Television, when you look at uh, the, 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 the documentaries and things about gang, they, they, they're not, they're, they're, they're showing y'all, they'll go and show you some older gang members that's gang banging that did all kind of stuff and they throw you off. That's, totally a false reality of the gang life. 
The gang life is actually not a gang life. It's a neighborhood life. And so when I lived uh, in, uh, when I lived in LA, I lived in a crip neighborhood. I'm a, I'm a raster man. I'm comedic and I'm a raster. And, and my, and my woman was a raster. And when we would go to the, uh, Swap me, all the Crips, you know what they used to call us? They used to call us Mr. and Mrs. Cuz. So when, when my children grew growing up in in Parkway Gardens, your children are your children are going back and forth to school, right? All of the older boys, they don't say nigga. That's why people be mad. You understand? They don't say nigger. They don't say words like that. When you go in a neighborhood that's a particular gang, if you're going to a, a black stone neighborhood, they don't call each other nigger. They don't call each other bro. They don't call each other fam. They call each other mo. What up, mo? Where you going, mo? What's up, mo? Where we back, mo? Everything is mo, 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 mo. The little kids is growing up and everybody's saying mo, 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 mo. So the little kids say what? Mo. And when I was in Park Way, guys, everybody say folks, 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 on David, on David, on David. It's BD neighborhood. So all the little boys are saying, what up, folks? You're basically, it's just like uh, it's just like if you're uh Bantu or you're some tribe in Africa and, you, and you're born there, that's what you are. That's how the gangs are. It's not really a join like people think it is. It's a neighborhood thing. You're automatically that. And if you're not that and you live in a neighborhood and you're considered a positive person that they respect in the neighborhood, they uh, defend you like you that. I had a lot of friends that was BD when I lived in Parkway. And you couldn't come to Parkway and talk crazy to me and my wife. Them BDs would whoop the fuck out you because we considered BD in a weird type of way. That's BD area, so everybody in there is under BD protection. It's just how it works. Everybody there is folks, basically. Even if you ain't folks. If you and if you ain't folks and you make it known that you ain't folks and you intentionally are something different, then you got a fucking problem. You're gonna get whacked. You can't be different. You got to be a part of the neighborhood. It's it's not like oh 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 join the gang. It's not like that. It's different. Chicago, you don't get jumped in. You get blessed in. It's different. And when you get blessed in, it's only because you official, but you've been that. So it's a it's a neighborhood thing that the kids growing up neighborhood. It's 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 not uh, mind control. You understand? You see, mind control is when somebody takes something and puts something in your head to control your mind. That's not what's happening to black youth. What's going on with black youth is nothing is being put into their head. Their heads are empty. Therefore, because the head is empty, it's a it's it's it picks up what's there. It's not forced. It's a natural flow. Shit, your brother BD. So it's not like, oh, I gotta be BD. It's not like that. You understand? 
Now, I, I and, 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 and this to prove it, there's family where there's th three, four sons that's in three, four different gangs. And the reason there's three sons is in three or four different gangs. Okay, the oldest son, he might have been, when he was born and grew up, they grew up in all girl gardens and in his section was vice lord. So he's a vice lord. He has a couple of brothers, but then the mother moves. The mother moves to 87. Now in 87, they all be these. So this vice lord, his little brother, his brother ain't vice lord. His brother be thee. Facts. If she moves somewhere else, the other little baby will be whatever's over there. See, he said it was grandmother blood. You, because people think that gang is gang banging. You see, gang, gang, gangs is not gang banging. Okay? So 97% of the gangs do not shoot and do not bang. 97%. Don't bang. It's not a requirement to bang. Not in Chicago. So it's not, it's not a gang. It's not, you're not in a gang. Everybody doesn't gang bang. You understand? And those that gang bang, the rest of the gang don't necessarily know what they're doing. It's not, you don't have to check in. So being two dudes and three dudes, we BDs, we can go do whatever. The other BDs, we don't tell them that we finna go around here and shoot people and all that. They have no clue. That's why when the mayor says, oh, the community should speak up, the community doesn't know what's going on. Like, someone says the parents have lost control. No, they don't have no parents. They don't have no parents. When the mayor gets on TV and say, where are the parents? He's lying to y'all. There is no parents. It's similar to like when, when my parents came from Alabama. I was born in 1958 and I was going to school and they were teaching me math and stuff like that. And my father used to only go to school in Alabama until the crops was ready. Anytime the crops was ready, my father couldn't go to school. He had to stay on the farm with my uncles and help my grandfather get the crops. School is out when the crops is ready. So my father wasn't real educated like that. My father was educated on being a carpenter, being a farmer. He knows that. So it's the same way. So when my father and them came up here and had me in Chicago, what the hell did they know? I was just in Chicago. I'm a whole new breed. They don't even know what I'm doing. They don't know what I'm doing out on the streets because what I'm doing on the streets of Chicago didn't exist in Alabama. They don't even have no idea it exists in Chicago. It's the same way. So when you talk educational wise, I didn't have no parents. And I'm glad somebody said that because that's the issue. They don't have no parents. And the school has to be the last line of defense. When I went to school, the school was the last line of defense. The teacher knew that I'm doing mathematics. New math, they used to call it. Those teachers knew that we had black teachers, black principals, and they knew that our parents couldn't help us with our homework. So therefore, the teacher made sure we knew what we had to do explain everything. And so if you listen in class, you can go home and do your homework. Now, what is all they telling the kids? The parents got to get involved. The parents got to get involved. Listen, y'all stop listening that the parents got to get involved. They don't have no parents. We're living in a system where a mayor would say, where are the parents? No, and the mayor know that they're getting ready to process 20,000 black men in the county jail Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And he got the nerve to say, where is the parents? And I'm thinking they in your damn jail. You understand? He know they don't got no parents. Thanks. Listen, y'all. If you're expecting the parents to get it together to help the kids, then just take all the kids and push them in a hole and cover them with bull, take a bulldozer and cover them with dirt. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. 
there's no parents. So if you're woke, if you're conscious or whatever, if you don't get out there and hit the streets together, love each other, if you're so woke, why you are, why, why you can't get together and go do something? You have to wait till the police kill you before you get together in March. You can't just get together and go to the hood and do nothing. Every time I see black people go, they always doing a reactionary. Somebody always got to fuck y'all up first before y'all get together and go to the damn community. And then you go to the community out there, hands up, don't shoot, and, and no fingers, no toes, and all this. And then when that's over, you're gone. But the community needs you all the time to come like that in groups. But you don't get along. And so if you're a black conscious and you're a part of a black woke group and you do not get along, don't you ever in your life Ask me why the gangs don't get along. What the hell are you talking about why the gangs don't get along? Hello? I'm just saying. The same shit. That's why I ain't with that. All that got to dead. So says me. All that got to go. Because ain't no way you can save the community and fight amongst yourselves and you the ones that got the knowledge to save the community. Come on, I need, we all need each other. Let's get together, let's go do something for the community and then let's go back to our perspective corners. Why do I care what a brother in the nation of Islam is teaching? Why do I care what a Moor is teaching? Why do I care what a Hebrew is teaching? When I got black youth out here shooting people, are the Moors running up and down here shooting black people? No. Is the nation of Islam running all over Chicago shooting black people? No. Are the black Christians that go to church and everything is in the blood of Jesus, are they running around here shooting black people? No. Is RBG shooting black people? No. Is comedic nations of God and earth? No, 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 no. So how much time I got for them? They ain't even doing nothing. But where there is a problem, everybody's scared and won't do nothing. Look at Detroit. Look at Chicago. Look at Newark. Look at L.A. But they're going to come in and take all your community from you. It's going to be the conscious community to blame. The woke community controls the situation. Anything that happens to black people, it's on it's on your you got that blood on your hand if you're conscious, if you're woke. The blood is on your hand because you know better. You know better, but you want to always talk about they should know better. They should know better. No, but you know better. And you ain't even talking to them. You constantly telling me that they should know better. You telling me the parents ain't no good. Go tell the parents. You telling me the gangs ain't no good. You won't go talk to the gangs. You are RBG telling the Pan-African that the gangs ain't no good. And neither you, the RBG or the Pan-African, neither one of y'all go to the streets. I'm just telling y'all, we got to take it to the streets. Figure it out, however you're going to do it. We got to take it to the streets, and these videos are going to have to be more uh, hood. Uh, these videos are going to have to, these videos that we're all making are going to have to talk about uh, the lowest denominator in our community. You just have to be in numbers. You have to be the new end thing. Now, if you're divided, of course, but you have to create a new thing. We've done it before. We've always had gangs. How do we get KRS one? How do we get poor righteous teacher? How do we get public enemy? Because the streets start going more conscious than gang. And when the streets start going more conscious and is more involved in the neighborhood, then it changes the music and it changes everybody in the, in the, in the, in the neighborhood. There's a reason Jeff Ford say, I'm El Rukin now instead of Blackstone Ranger. It's the reason. That was the effects from the consciousness on the streets.
it has to go to the streets. If they don't see you on the streets, if you are BG and you're not going to the worst neighborhoods, if, if, if it's just like this. Every time we have these conscious events, we always go find a park somewhere and we have these conscious events and all the conscious people come to these festivals. I propose we start throwing these festivals down in the roughest areas. I remember when we used to have Holly Selassie Day at, on Washington Park. It was the greatest thing ever because it was an opportunity for the kids that lived in the low income areas there to come and see something they would never see before. It would get them an opportunity to come to my booth and I give them a couple of dollars so they could run around there and buy them something. I used to give all the little youth, hood youth, when they would come to Selassie Day, I would give them money. I would tell them, don't y'all be in here fighting. We don't fight in here. That was their first opportunity of being able to go somewhere. I've been saying this over and over again. Our youth don't know how to act. We got to start throwing events where we teach them how to act. Okay, well, I'm going to throw the event. It might be a shooting, but the mayor got to give me a pass if I don't keep throwing these events and keep standing on them and keep teaching them how they're going to learn how to act if they don't never go nowhere. We have to be willing for them to act a fool so we can say, no, don't do that. Now, y'all messed the last party up. Now, we're going to have another one and stand on their damn necks. And I'm going to tell you something before I end this. And this is a fact. The streets... Never disrespect conscious people. This is a fact. Ask anybody. Ask your boss. Ask Brother Ben X. The streets respect y'all. This is a fact. The streets respect. When they see a sister with a head wrap, a brother with some type of African on, brother nation Islam, Hebrew, the streets respect us. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, when we throw... Black conscious events down in the hood, it don't be no fighting the our stuff. That's a fact. They come and they just be as nice as ever. They be asking questions because they respect you. They respect you when you RBG, when you Pan-African, when you comedic. They respect culture, black culture. That's the only thing that can make our youth listen. I'm telling you what I'm fucking telling you. When I went in fucking county jail, I was fucking Jesus Christ in there. Trust me what I'm telling you. I was Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's a fact. They respect consciousness. And the, and, the, and the worst part, and the worst black communities, touching conscious people is an automatic no-no. It's like an like unmentioned rule. They don't bother us. This is a fact. They do not bother us. I used to walk all through O Block. I'm the reason Chief Keith and them got dreads. I'm the original Shot Town dreadhead savage. And the little kids then would say, I know what those are. I said, what? Dreadlocks? But the brothers wouldn't keep having events in the hood. They wanted to go off and have a Holly Selassie event somewhere and be holy. I've been in a big war with the Rosses in Chicago because they won't bring, they won't do their celebrations back for the hood. And I keep telling them, listen, either you're going to help the citizens of the city of Chicago or you got to go to Zion, bro. You ain't going to be able to be here and ignore the hood and keep saying you're going to go to Ethiopia. You need to just go to Ethiopia because you ain't doing a damn thing to help us here. Facts. Like, we have to bring it to the kids. We have to, your brothers, if you like to play drums, stop going playing drums at African events. Go take them drums and go down in the worst areas. They not going to do nothing. They not going to shoot you. They going to love them drums. They got respect for culture. Trust me what I'm telling you. You can go where the worst gangbangers at right now with a bunch of African drums. They ain't going to touch you. They ain't going to touch you. Actually, they're going to be flattered and they're going to enjoy that you're thinking about. Them. It's going to be like a break from the ghetto. I'm just telling you that you got the power, you got to use it. You got the power. If you, these are records. I got my movie collection. 
You see all them black movies? Whoa. But you got the power. I got some Malcolm X movies and stuff in there, too. You got the power. So you got to exercise it. 